This is tutorial 17 on how to model a plane using PlaneMaker and Blender. This is Blender part 3. Just as a reminder, let's go ahead and open up, uh, let's import again the object that we exported from PlaneMaker last time, Xplane object. And I wanted to point out how you navigate. I didn't point it out clearly enough last time around, but this P here stands for parent directory. So if you notice here, this is the complete file path. And uh, if you go P, it's like going up in the directory. And then the directories are represented by these uh, white letters, and files are represented by black font. So my ERJ140 object is here, and I have several ways of loading it up. Either I can select it so that it's uh, visible here. I select it with a left mouse button, and then I can say import OBJ. Or if I want to skip that step of moving the mouse all the way over here, is I can simply click on the middle mouse button or the scroll wheel in order to load this thing up directly. So last time around we learned a little bit of navigation. Uh, we learned the 1, 3, and 7. Now I'm interested in showing you more of how to work with the actual parts. Now parts are selected in Blender with the right mouse button, not the left mouse button. It's the right mouse button. That's, that'll be very unintuitive for most of you, especially in the beginning stages, but you will get used to it and even though I still don't know exactly what the uh, reasoning behind that is, I've gotten used to it and I find it very comfortable. So if you really, really want to do it your own way, you can uh, uh, pull down this thing for setting the preferences, and then you can say select with left mouse, and that'll allow you to select objects and stuff like that with the left mouse and the right mouse button, then we'll place the 3D cursor. Um, I'm going to leave it uh, with selecting it the way I'm used to, but if you think it would help you learn Blender better, if you could select stuff with the left mouse button, then be my guest and uh, change that around there. Okay, uh, now we have the airplane in here as well as that uh, that box. And what I'm doing with the Z key here is I'm, I'm toggling between wireframe view and solid view. I can hit the A key to deselect everything and then to select everything. And I can hit the shift right mouse button to deselect the objects such as camera and light so that I have only the plane selected in its entirety. Zooming is accomplished with the scroll wheel in and out, and I have my preference set in such a way that wherever the mouse pointer is pointing, that's the uh, central location of the zoom. So it's an intuitive way to zoom in on what you're interested in, and it just speeds up navigation that way. That setting would be found here under this drawer, and you would click on zoom to mouse position to activate that. Otherwise, it would just simply zoom to a random location, pretty much the center of the screen. Okay, uh, next I will want to join this uh, airplane together. This plane consists of different parts. It's really hard to work with a plane that's d divided into so many parts. I just want to make one part of the, out of this plane, and the way I do that, I just deselected everything. I probably shouldn't have done that, but maybe it's a good thing because now I can show you that there's other methods of selecting stuff in Blender. And one of those is what they call the rubber band technique, but it is not the way that, you know, notice how you don't have a tool palette here like in other programs like Photoshop or whatever. The philosophy of Blender is that you can simply use key commands to accomplish all those tool palette uh, type of things and it keeps the interface cleaner. The way I activate rubber band mode is I hit the B button for border. This is called border select in Blender, and I can go in and uh, draw my box around the objects that I want selected. Notice how this light got selected as well. The reason for that is because the light has a has a component that goes all the way down to the uh, center of the page here, the green line here. So again, you can use the B button to select. Part of the benefit of selecting objects using the border select method is that as soon as you let go of the mouse button and you've got the object selected that you've been intending to select, then Blender exits out of border select method automatically, so you don't have to switch any tools or press any other key command. It reverts back to the normal, uh, and this is what Blender does with all of its tools, with a resize tool, with a grab tool, with a rotate tool. As soon as you've got a task accomplished with a certain keyboard shortcut or command, then Blender reverts automatically to its default editing mode, which is really, really nice. That really helps you speed up the process, because you don't find yourself switching between all these different uh, tools all the time, which is the case for many other programs. And if you want to deselect components of it, you use the B key again and you use the middle mouse button to deselect the components that you wish to deselect. Whatever touches that uh, selection box gets deselected. So you might want to try practicing that a little bit. 
Okay, to get on with it here, I'm going to select the whole plane. I'm going to deselect the light, and I'm going to shift select the fuselage as the main object that I want to join all the other objects to. So the way I join objects is I use the Control and J keyboard shortcut. And it will ask me join selected meshes and I will click the left mouse button to confirm. So now this plane is one unit. If I select the camera and then select the plane again, it's all going to select as one unit and not as little individual parts anymore. This is what I wanted to do before I start showing you how to move stuff around in Blender. That, was, that would be the next step. You can do three major functions with objects in Blender. You can grab them with G, you can rotate them with R, and you can resize them with S. Now, it doesn't matter where the mouse cursor is. You can have it way off. If you hit G, suddenly the plane will latch onto your mouse cursor, and you can move the plane like that. If you want to cancel that move, you just hit the Escape key. If you want to confirm the move, you just hit the left mouse button. So I'll undo that, and the same thing applies for rotation. If I want to cancel the rotation, I hit Escape. If I want to confirm the rotation, I hit the left mouse button. And the same thing goes for resize. Cancel is Escape, and confirm you do with the left mouse button. Now, I want you to look down here in this corner as I'm resizing and moving and rotating this, this object. There's a set of numbers that shows up. It shows you by which factor you are resizing it. For example, if I want it to be twice the size, I go close to 2. Again, it would be really useful if you could snap it to the nearest unit. And you can actually do that by pressing the control key while you're in resize mode. And now your plane is twice the size. Very handy. If I want to move it around, I hit the G button. And I can also snap it to the grid by hitting control. And you'll see again here the units are displayed with these numbers here, how far you are moving it from its original location. And same thing goes for rotation. In the case of rotation, you're snapping it to the nearest 5 degrees. And you can also move it with smaller subdivisions, 10 times smaller to be precise. If you hit G for grab and then you hit Control and Shift, uh, you're moving it by tenths of units. This is very helpful for accurate positioning of your objects. When you rotate it, it moves it by uh, one degree at a time. It snaps to the nearest degree. And for resize, it snaps to the nearest tenth of uh, size a unit. One more thing I need to show you about uh, grabbing, resizing, and rotating. If you're at an oblique angle, say I'm looking at the plane from this perspective, I can still limit the movement that I'm causing or inflicting on this plane to any given axis. So if I hit G here, I can constrain the movement of the plane to the Y axis simply by hitting the Y key on the keyboard. I can constrain it to the X axis or the Z axis, and as long as I'm in G mode and I haven't cancelled with escape or confirmed with the left mouse button, I can change modes around and change the axis along which the movements are constrained. Same thing goes for size. I can constrain the resizing motion along the X axis, the Y axis, or the Z axis simply by pressing those keys. And it applies to rotation as well. If I have the ro rotation key enabled, I can hit X to rotate it around the X axis, Y around the Y axis, and Z around the Z axis. Now you'll notice if you're in an oblique view and you're rotating it without having it constrained to any axis, then it will by default rotate in accordance with the uh, perpendicular plane of view. So it'll move around as though it's facing you uh, directly. The axis of rotation is something you're looking on right here. Same thing goes for grab. It'll move it along the uh, oblique plane. Once you've uh, got it in grab mode or resize mode or rotate mode, you can constrain it to axis and you can still use the control key to snap the movement to the nearest uh, unit. And in our case here, the blender units are actually equal to meters in real life. So each one of these squares here will be equal to one meter. And if you have a plane that is a certain amount of meters long, you can expect to find that it will be that amount of squares long. So that can make measurements a lot easier, especially when you're converting stuff. We'll get to that a little bit later and the usefulness of it. Uh, for now, I'll leave that just so that you know that you can snap stuff to this grid and that it represents meters. So those are the basics of joining objects together and uh, moving them around, resizing them, rotating them, constraining them to axes, allowing them to snap to the grid. And we will find that as we start editing objects, uh, similar principles apply. And what we're going to go into next is actually how to modify the object in question. For example, like this. 
I hope to see you in the next tutorial for that.